Hello YouTube and welcome to my awesome blackness channel, or ABC for short. My name is Mighty, and on this platform, I'm going to explore the awesomeness of our black people. That's right, whether you're big or small, celebrity or civilian, anywhere in the world, if you're awesome, you're featured here. And for this video, I'm going to switch it up a little. Welcome to the 20th episode of ABC. I'm personally excited to have reached this milestone because for one, I'm a serial procrastinator. So, while 20 videos might be a walk in the park for a monster content creator, it was monster content for me to create. Whether it was a lagging computer, only being able to edit and record voiceover at weird times and or places, or just life in general. If I just so happen to get caught up in the throes of creativity, it didn't take much to have it derailed in spectacular fashion. In spite of this, I apparently accomplished a goal. I just want to sit on that point for a moment because I hope this reaches someone who feels like theirs may be impossible to hit. It's not. Take it from me. Whatever it is, start small and keep moving. Create baby steps and don't allow setbacks to be justification to step back. I have more bumper sticker mantras I could espouse, but I'll spare you the excessive corniness. I'm also proud to announce that at the making and broadcast of this video, the other goal of 100 subs has been reached. And my appreciation for all you day ones can't be overstated. Thank you. Okay, so as promised, I'm switching it up one more again and highlighting a fellow YouTuber. And who boy, it appears that I have to say this with slight trepidation because this may very well destroy the goodwill I just established with a slew of new subscribers that just came in. Which, by the way, hello, welcome and thanks. For the rest of you wondering why, as you scratch your heads, I'll explain below. But first, allow me to formally introduce Sansa Ray Smith, a fellow content creator who's been on the platform for over a decade now. Currently, she's sitting at a respectable 42K subs with over 7 million views, according to her social blade. She also has another channel dedicated to her baby son with close to 900 subs and 90K views. Born on the 1st of June in 1980 and originally from Washington, D.C., Miss Smith spent the better part of her life in Atlanta, Georgia. Currently, she resides in San Francisco, California. In her early days, Miss Smith pursued a career in modeling, in addition to holding a number of unique positions, businesses, and hustles. So much so that she's in the running for the most interesting woman in the world. Going back over her catalog, it also appears just as varied as she. With the creator trying her hands at everything from comedic skits, story times, true crime, vlogging, spiritual and metaphysical, motivation, cooking, health and beauty tutorials, and much more. However, these days, she gives regular uploads of live videos, a more focused commentary in her edited content, in addition to offering the God Queen podcast, of which is also streamed on multiple platforms. Furthermore, she maintains a blog, Sans Array, Read My Mind, which serves as a less restrictive annex to her respective outlets. Okay, so now that I got the overall generic preamble out of the way, let's get to some nitty gritty. A quick disclaimer, while my videos have developed into a formulaic rhythm, one which did not deviate too much into the exposition, such as the one I'm going to provide, I felt it necessary, as explained. But fret not, because it'll all tie together in the end. On first blush, Miss Smith appears to manage a channel that adopts messages of positivity. However, and admittedly, the way in which I happened upon her wasn't through such. The details are long and convoluted, so I'll spare you. I will summarize, though, by stating that one thing any content creator knows about this YouTube world is that it becomes small once you get involved, and even smaller when amongst a subset like the black YouTubers. So just imagine a six degrees of separation as to how I discovered her. Again, Miss Smith seems to be a polarizing figure within the community. On the one hand, you have this unique but otherwise just another content creator on the platform who makes videos that, albeit are clickbaity at times, because as part of the game, I get it, and heavy on the ads, hashtag secure the bag, but apart from that, whose content is generally harmless. And then on the other, there's this legion of people who are seemingly going out of their way to discredit, character assassinate, and demean her. And I needed to know why. So, in a fair assessment of things, I did a deep dive into her and her channel. And I have to say that after watching countless hours from her and the orbiters who seem to be in some way connected, I came to the conclusion as to why this may be. Before we continue, 
I just want to say that I won't be going into detail regarding who she's had squabbles with specifically because A, it's well documented, so a quick search would get you on your way, which segues into B, the lore is long and vast, and C, this ain't that type of channel. So I will be keeping it concise and to generalities where possible for the sake of what already feels like is going to be a huge video. Firstly, a good part of the controversy seems to stem from the fact that she recounts her life, warts and all, in extreme detail, and some of the peripheral characters have expressed discontent as it relates to having their business out in these YouTube streets. And to an extent, I get it. Not everyone wants their business exposed in such a widespread manner. However, I've learned ever since I can remember that an element which comes along with being or being in proximity to a public figure is that all bets are off when it comes to maintaining any semblance of a private life. That's the trade-off, as any celebrity will disclose. I will, however, add that as it relates to YouTubers, a few things do change the situation, like who you're rocking with, what their content consists of, and if they even show themselves in their videos. Anyway, Miss Smith's transparencies were undoubtedly the genesis of an ongoing contributor to the inevitable drama that ensued, stirred up from the above mentioned to now include their family members, friends, and supporters, as they themselves develop channels in an effort to refute claims made by her, and probably not done with the best tact or sophistication. You know, another part of this YouTube world I discovered is that it's a lot like high school. Whether it was just last year or a couple of decades ago now, I bet you can vividly recall when the halls came alive and factions were brought together in kumbaya fashion, regardless of what stereotype personalities you fit into when the drama went down. And this place is no different. In fact, a lot of channels are profiting off the pension to spill the tea and mop up the mess. And I'm not knocking them. Although I was the chill, quiet, observant dude who mostly avoided drama, even I wasn't above being attracted to it. That also appeared to be the case on here when I was simply a content consumer. However, as I made the decision to start my brand, the part of me to steer clear of such was reaffirmed. Thus, this. Oh, and by the way, for those who are interested, I went to a performing arts high school and majored in theater, so that's about enough drama for me for a lifetime. Back to Miss Smith though, and as to why I decided to do a video on her in particular. Well it stems from a number of reasons, but it can be generally summed up as such. As stated in my video on Shelly Ann Fraser Price, the fellow YouTubers I continue to watch both inspire and inform how my channel evolves. Miss Smith states in her channel bio that she's a women's rights activist and domestic violence advocate who provides commentary about co-parenting, custody, child support, paternity, and family law. Thus, as reflected in more recent videos, her channel seems to have evolved, focusing on empowering single mothers with words of encouragement, unabashed self-reflection, advice, and resources to help them navigate the hashtag single mom life, as she is one herself to children's Dominique and Justice. Names and image of whom are proudly prominent on her channel and in videos, so I'm not outing them. This part resonated with me and caused me to reflect on my own life. See, I have two sisters and a dearly departed cousin and a sister-in-law who are or were single mothers. Heck, my mother at one time raised me and my four siblings on her own, all of which were not without their nicks and scratches. So suffice to say, I have a lot of reference material and a vested interest, as I can truly see Miss Smith as my sister. We close in age, by the way. This kinship is made more evident when I see her interacting with her daughter. In one video, I remember Sansa Rae whimsically breaking it out into a song in the middle of a conversation with Dom, as she is affectionately called. I took pause because this is exactly how my sister, of whom we're also close in age, engages with uh, Lil Koi Fish, as we call her. That said, I noticed that part of Miss Smith's lambasting was due to her parental status. You know, I acknowledge listening to my fair share of YouTubers condemning single motherhood. Very few times it was delivered in a reasonable, measured way, but more often times than not, it's in hyperbolic and uh, vitriolic fashion. 
and even despite such a bombastic conveyance, I could still see their point to an extent, which is to generally highlight the worst offenders. Even still though, I can never fully buy into the ideology of publicly rebuking them. Part of this comes from a personal code that I live by of not airing out family business in front of others, but then there's also the overall ineffectiveness of it. I mean, sure, it gets the attention, but does it maintain it? It's the intellectual equivalent to hitting the lottery over becoming a self-made millionaire, in my opinion. Again, I'm not knocking anyone's hustle, as this platform is vast, wide, diverse, and I am pro-First Amendment. Moreover, I fully believe in calling out personal accountability, so I'm not blinded to anyone's flaws. Which brings me to a quick aside on this current digression, I know. There seems to be a certain stigma associated with the disposition of single motherhood, even more so in our community. And believe me, I'm not here caping for it, but I also don't like seeing what looks like collateral damage in the campaign against it. I know my sisters and cousins' stories personally, and I know their parental status wasn't to be aspired. It was the product of circumstance, as was Miss Smith's. Again, she's open and honest with how she got to where she is in life, careful not to downplay her hand in things. Similarly, it appears that her goal is to demystify such stereotypes and even work to change the system, which seems to be disproportionately unfair to the fathers, which is appealing. Despite or in light of these things, it seems to have muddied the waters and caused her to get sidetracked in, among other things, defending the oftentimes slanderous allegations levied against her. Which brings me to her dissenters. Looking into the videos of those who are refuting and reacting to her, I quickly got a sense of who they are, and I found that it was a 2080 split in favor of people just keeping a dumpster fire ablaze. Again, those who are or were in Ms. Smith's life are more than likely slighted, and it can be argued rightfully so. So this drama is the culmination of them and the supporters they garner, pushing against Sansa Rae, who is rightfully defending herself, most notably her status as a single mother, which is remarkable given that she shares only, quote, 20% of my life. You know, this brings me to another allegation, though that she has to defend herself against. Another way in which we as a community tend to undermine one's credibility is to, let's say, out their history, which has always been an interesting tactic. So if it's a masculine guy, you suggest he's gay. And if it's a woman, infer that she's loose. Those who are slinging such stones do so on the premise that Miss Smith's past doesn't give her any leg to stand on. And on that note, I'm compelled to get a little church on y'all. But rather than going all easy and espousing the he who was without sin trope, just go look up two women, Rahab and Mary Magdalene. I'll wait. Miss Smith's foibles notwithstanding, her content and character seems consistent, a fact which can be easily made evident after only a few videos. And like my maternal kinfolk, Sansa Rae's single motherhood isn't based and certainly not to be commingled with the likes of the truly ratchet. Whose behaviors, by the way, I will admit do not bode well for the community, but the method in which to convey such a message, I still struggle to conceptualize. So I guess the likes of those extreme content creators are needed. Perhaps they're like the content cops of our community. I digress. Sure, Miss Smith's stories are filled with hard-headedness, but I can also see that it's underpinned with wholeheartedness. In fact, her entire journey seems to be of her trusting fully in the virtually untrustworthy only to have her gut instincts to walk away, which she initially overrides, proven correct. Her revealing such heartache in a video, the indicated parties refuting her claims with mostly ad hominems, and her responding in kind to them and the trash flinging spectators. Like I said, high school. Side note, I was just thinking about this point when I was editing and I had to add this for y'all. Okay, you do realize that regardless of what your claim or rebuttal is, the moment you resort to such tactics, you and your words instantly become delegitimized. I mean, sure, it may work in hip hop, you know, with the freestyle, or if you're battle rapping and you drop one of those clue bombs on somebody. But as I've mentioned before, the black diaspora is vast and diverse and the intellectuals among us, aka nerds, have been on the rise. Therefore, if your intention is to merely pander to a certain demographic only to score a hollow <laughs> then I suppose you're being effective. However, you're not scoring points elsewhere. I'm just saying. Ja
But past all of this, a nugget of wisdom and truth is gleaned if you're keen enough observer, as I have been. Like, for example, her relationship with her children. Of the videos and pictures they're featured in, none of which seems to have that front for the camera vibe, this strongly indicates that her relationship is genuine behind the scenes. And they seem to be happy and healthy, and perhaps insulated from the harsh digital world that is YouTube. Her charity work and nonprofits are plentiful and verifiable, as there are videos on her channel and pictures on her IG showing her giving back to the community, among other things. And again, her transparencies are raw, non-exploitative, and serve as a cautionary tale for younger viewers. And she has a comeback story the likes of several others I've already covered, which is why what makes her awesome as a parent, looking to refocus on advocacy, activism, nonprofit, and charity work, Sansa Ray made a pledge in a recent live stream to leave the drama behind in the 2019. And I agree, there will always be dissenters, dissuaders, and trolls. Because some men just want to watch the world burn. Heck, I'm waiting for my haters to reveal themselves because that'll really show me that I've arrived on this platform. But for real, I really don't want that smoke. I mean, ideally, I would love for all of us to come together as a village and not merely for tragedies. However, if that's not the case, it would at least behoove us to move in silence like other groups. And if there is a disagreement amongst us, i.e. tackling the reasons behind the single motherhood epidemic in our community, we create spaces where we can discuss them with reason and grace. No, oh well, as long as I'm wistfully dreaming, I'll just try to make it a reality on my own and in my own way with this channel. And hopefully Miss Smith does on hers. In closing, and just to be clear, I'm not caping for anyone. Despite this channel's message of celebrating awesomeness, which is admittedly inherently biased, consider this one 80% informative and 20% propaganda, if it's even that. As with all of my videos so far, I'm not paid to do this, nor do I have a personal connection with anyone to include Sansa Ray Smith. In fact, when I approached her with my intentions of making this video, she was rightfully cautious for a whole host of reasons, some of which have yet to be revealed. Just like in my video on Nipsey Hussle, the intention was to steer the message of an otherwise controversial figure from their follies to their feats. And Miss Smith has a lot of the latter over the former when you start to look around. Taking all of the above into consideration, I pretty much asked myself this question. What would I do if this was my sister being dragged to filth? The answer became this video. Okay, so thanks for watching. And again, thank you for an amazing year on this platform. 2020 promises to be a bigger and better one for me, and I hope it is for you as well. Let's start by reducing the drama because whether you like it or not, it seems as though the platform as a whole is done with it, and maybe rightfully so, because we should loudly celebrate wins rather than blaringly overstating losses. Anyway, I hope you all have a fun and safe new year, and I will see you on the other side with more content ready to go, irregularly scheduled as it will now be known for the foreseeable future. In the meantime, if you like what you see, keep the love coming the best way you know how by liking and sharing. Get more people to like, share, subscribe, and click that notification bell so you know when I drop another nugget. Oh, and P.S. If you're looking to unsubscribe and make me a pariah in the process, who am I not to allow you to exercise your free will? Can you at least just leave a thumbs down on your way out though? Either way. Until then, stay awesome! <laughs>
I love you.